Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mama Coco. I, you know, a few years back, uh, when I was uh, stationed in New York, there was something that was happening. I got a call from a couple of pastors and they said, Pastor Wendy, we need your help because there was a lot of um, deportees. And this particular um, issue came up with someone who was from Guyana. And they were saying that they were deportees that were being sent out of America back to Guyana. And these deportees were some uh, uh, committing some of the most horrific crimes. Um, and they were living in the uh, graveyards. So I asked, well, what is the church doing? I tried to get a, a group of pastors together. And that was when I got to realize what was happening. It was happening across the Caribbean where the deportees were going back down. Most of their families were abroad, nobody back home, and they had to survive. I said, well, here's the, here's the, here's the role of the church. The role of the church is to love, to show love. Again, we're coming back to love. I said, so the role of the church, even in this instant that we're talking about, is to make sure that we, even if it's to put up some halfway houses so that we can make sure that those young people who don't have a place to stay can stay there. While they're staying there, you're going to have to train them. This is, this is where I think we dropped the ball back in Tobago. Remember long ago you had a child, a son, a grandson? Papa would take him to the bush to teach him about gardening. If Papa was a carpenter, he'd have him right under his hand there, teach him how to pong nail. If Papa mm -hmm. was a mason or an electrician, he had the little boy right there. And even in each village, if there was a young boy who did not have a male figure, some man from the village would take that young man under his wing and teach him. Remember, I can use my brother case and point. He didn't like high school. And so when my grandmother realized that he didn't like high school, she sent him down to Trinidad to learn trade. He, is, he learned to be a jeweler. For many years, he was one of the top jewelers with Y. Delima and, and, and Mirage, uh, uh, making and creating. The, today, he is right there uh, off Bacolet Road. You, you probably know him as Lester or Steggy or Michael. And that's where he has his jewelry shop right there next to Quartz. That's my big brother. Hey. You understand? So they realized that he didn't want to, to go the, the, the average regular zone of high school and whatever, but he was good to learn a trade. So our people, the church now, has to find ways of providing uh, workshops, training courses, you know, and get these young people off of the road. And this is not about, oh, I want you to become a Seventh-day Adventist, or I want you to become a Pentecostal mm -hmm. like me. This is about seeing and catering to the needs of your environment. And it comes right back down to each village. I believe if each village takes a particular interest in secure, what, what we say back home, charity begins at home and ends abroad. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. You're not waiting for the government to fix the ills in your village. There are some things, yes, that they need to do. But I believe if we show love as a family and we pull these young people from off of the streets and say, look, some of them want to go to school and can't afford it. Can what, we invest in them? What they have to do. Yes. Church, we, church must come out and participate. So correct. We, we can't act as if we are the elitists. You know, like we in some social club in the church. Well, I'm saved and you are not, so I can't. You know, the Bible says we become all things to all men so we can win some. Christ's mm -hmm. ministry, the greatest tool of evangelism that Jesus taught us was meeting people at the point of their need. What is the need? There has to be some village assessments, some community assessments that can be done by the people that live in the village. If you are a village council, then you need to assess your village and find out what is the need in that village. And then you begin to get the need. You do what you can, and then for the rest that you can't, then you go to your, uh, to your government. You go to the Tobago House of Assembly. Listen to, what, listen to who is Zephaniah and yes. what Zephaniah says. Okay. During Judah's hectic political shut yourself people and mm -hmm. religious history reforms come reform comes from time to time zephaniah's forceful prophecy may be a factor in the reform that occurs during josiah's reign 
So when people want to tell me that there is a separation of church and state, there's not. There's mm -hmm. not. There is not. And and I can I can I can I can emphasize listen, and prove that, Mama Coco. Listen, what they call it, Sister Wendy Pastor. Yes. It's called a revival. Yes. That we, we, listen, that produces outward change, but does not fully remove the inward heart of corruption, which characterizes the nation. Zephaniah hammers home his message repeatedly that the day of the Lord's judgment day is coming when the malignancy of sin will be dealt with. Listen to me. So we have to bring forces together. Mm -hmm. well, well, one of the roles of the church, Mama Coco, the role of the church, remember there were always prophets from Moses to Jeremiah to, to Nehemiah to, to Elijah to Elisha. They spoke truth to power. Okay, where the people could not even get to, let's say, uh, the king, the prophet was always the one that would go to the king on behalf of the people. When Ahab was doing wrong, Elijah, Elijah went to him, and Amen. from the time Ahab saw him, Ahab said, uh, 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 Are thou here to trouble Israel? In other words, yes, I'm here to tell you that what you're doing is wrong to the poor people, that you're stealing from the people, that you're not meeting the needs of the people, that the people need to be fed, that there, there need to be programs that would get all young people from off the street. So we speak truth to power without fear because we represent God. We represent the book. So the church has to. And, and, and they, they, listen, you have to put your, your hand on the Bible to swear yourself into office. There is no separation. Hey. Hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're swearing Point. so help you God with your Hello. right hand. <laughs> Look at you today. You can't take God out of this. Preach. Amen. The church has its role to make sure because if the society is suffering, it means that the church is not doing her job. Hello, mm -hmm. yo. Yeah. And I'm yeah. sorry, the church is not here to collect money, and the pastors drive the 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 the, the uh, Mercedes Benz and the the Bentleys, while your congregants can't make a meal, can't put a meal on their tables. So we have got to get this correct because we have turned upside down. Where are the that would go to the, the to the prime minister and say, "You got to do this. You got to do this." Don't encourage them in corruption. Don't no. describe. Yes. So where is God in this? God said, I am in the affairs of every man. Correct. You're preaching, man. God is in the affairs of every man. He said he's God of all people. Every kindred, mm. every kind, every race, every tongue. So you can't want me to go out and walk for my daily bread and bring money for you, but you can't defend me in front of the government. Come on. Anyone hmm. have anything else to say very short to support? Look, look at what's happening in the world now with COVID-19. Yes. All these very rich, wealthy ministers still telling the people, you got to bring 10% of your wages to God. And Nonsense. many of them don't even have money to buy food for them to eat. Many of them are out of their jobs. Why haven't they opened up their mansions? Why haven't they sell some oh, of their, no, 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 their no. super jets and get the money and feed your people? There we go. Okay. We have to rest this there for today. This is going tight. And this is the order of the day. This is the order from God for today. I don't even know where this all comes from. This show happened in one single day. Everyone that was asked said yes. So we have one more question, which is your final statement. There's a there's a, a, a question there. Can I see it, please? We already end this show with questions for today. Well, let me just do this last one. Pastor Wendy, what, what should the people of Tobago, yes? Mm -hmm. reasonably accept yeah 
Expect to receive. Expect to receive. I can't even see these long. Expect to receive from places of worship during the pandemic. Well, the, 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 the house of God is supposed to be the place where they can go to get help. Look, I, I pastor a church here in, in, in Covington, Georgia. And there are times that I'm gone almost all of the day, whether it be to go to the food bank, to come back to prepare baskets of food for people who cannot go out to work. If the church has resources, there should never be somebody who is suffering in the middle of a pandemic and their lights are being cut. It's your job to take care of your congregants. That's why you are called a shepherd. When you are a shepherd and you're leading sheep, you have to make sure you pour in the oil on the wound and you bandage it up. You minister to their needs. You feed them when they are hungry. You clothe them when they are naked. That is your duty. The people of God, they, they don't be sitting there, you know, like Joel Alstein just collected how many millions of dollars for his church. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that there are people that have lost their house. Yes. Mm -hmm. In the middle of everything that we're doing here, we have had to go out on the streets, cook, go feed the homeless. Besides that, we have members of our congregation. We have elders that are not working or pulling in a salary. I have to make sure that they get food every week. And I'm not just talking about uh, uh, rice and flour and oil. I'm talking about fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, hey. you know, whatever it is that they need. I have to find it because they are my sheep. I am the shepherd over them. And, and am I getting paid for this? No, I'm not even asking them or harassing them on social media. Oh, you got to send your tithes in because we can't have church without. Yet they know what their obligations are. You have a discussion for those that are working. You, 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 you don't go to the building. You do it. Oh, no. No, we find the food wherever we are, wherever the non-for-profits are working. We get in touch with them. We find it. We come back to the base. We package it. And I'm talking, when I say food, I mean chicken, rice, oil, uh, flour, um, oats, um, milk, cheese, bread, um, fish, butter, butter what, whatever it is that, that, that they need, um, um, spaghetti, whatever it is, fruits and vegetables. You have to make sure that you find it for them. Don't sit on your blessed assurance and tell them they need to pay tithe so that you can get a salary. <laughs> the devil is a liar. The truth is not in him. There's so, a question yeah. for you. Question for you, Pastor Wendy. Yes, there. Question. Read it. Read it, Joanne. Okay, Pastor Dr. Wendy, what should the people of Tobago reasonably expect to receive from their places of worship during a pandemic. Just exactly what I just said. Everything and Good. then some. Yes. Because we are supposed to find it as pastors. We have to find wherever the food is so that we can take care of our sheep. Like some people who may, right. Amen. Some people may need a little help with their phone, bill a phone card. Exactly. Get rent. Yes. yes, and even let's let's say this even though Mama Coco, even though you might not have the physical money, it is your duty as the shepherd to find out there are there are like for instance here in Georgia, there are um uh community organizations that you can contact to help somebody who is having difficulty to pay their phone bill. You gotta find it. Like take for instance again, I'm dropping it home because this is Tobago, this is our yes. space. Like take for instance. Somebody in somebody in Tobago. The child need a little iPad or stuff. Can they can they, can a pastor help by even asking? Or they should. They should. They That's should. their responsibility to the help. Out. Look, it's even with the, the village, the 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 library that we were talking about. I just got in touch with um, Dave Clark from Pembroke. And Dave Clark got connected to Bishop Claude Berkeley, right? Tell out of Pembroke. From, tell them what a big man from Pembroke, <laughs> what he does for Jehovah's people. Amen. We So we got connected with Dave. Dave, who is in New York. Dave Clark is in New York. And Dave runs a pantry out of New York City, feeding hundreds of people per week. Now, with all of that, I call him. I said, Dave, I got this thing that I want to do back for the village. He said, I got the spot. He got in touch with Bishop Claude Berkeley out of Pembroke. I think he's head of the Anglican 
um, yes, uh, Bishop. Episcopal, right, mm -hmm. Bishop Claude Berkeley, and and Bishop Berkeley is now connecting to the principal at Pembroke um, uh, RC School. And we are going to work together. We want to send a couple um, computers and iPads down there for the children that would need the help uh, to make sure that this is implemented. Look, it's if you don't have it, you got to find a way to do it. Hey. Find a way, connect with somebody. We're going to pack some barrels, send it down, um, send it to the village where you're from. You can do this. Each village, mm -hmm. each one reach one. Set, pack the barrels, send it down, cook the food, feed those who are who, who are homeless, feed those yes. who need feed, feeding. Send the clothing. Some of us have some clothes. Go in the closet, you find clothes that we can't even fit into anymore with yes. the tags on. But you yes. just want to mm -hmm. talk about it. You got to yeah, send man. it down to somebody who needs it. Mm -hmm. Open up some opportunities. Find some ways of... Uh, um, starting some initiatives that would get these people back to where they need to go to work. Use the school, use the church building, use the conference room at the church, do the trainings and hire them. Yes. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are so out of time. And again, what we can do, instead of always sending down barriers to give to people free, let them open up a consignment store in your church. There you go. Yes. So that they will yes, yes. For the community, not for your church members only, but for your community. What kind of community you have and you want to have a big million dollar church in? It doesn't make sense. That's right. People, it, the, 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 the people in your community are those that you want to attract for your church, not those in the church. Jesus said, I come not for the righteous man, but for the sinners unto repentance. Hallelujah. He said, that we should, you should have life and have it more abundantly. He said, I am here and I am the shepherd and you are my sheep. And yeah. if one is missing out of a hundred, he doesn't stay mm. until I have 99 there. So me and Keba, you have to go and look for the lost sheep. That's why God shut down all the churches. That's why he was to rebuke them. Yeah, you shut it down so that we can go out and find the people that are really in need. Yes. And stop we, being we evaluate. And evaluate. Stop being money hungry, and enjoy ourselves, and go and find the people that really need need the help. Yes, everybody in your church pray now to God for favor, favor. Mm. What is that? Ready to favor one person or favor two people? Everybody asking mm -hmm. for favor. You can't come now and choose who to give favor to. Mama Coco. If we would go right back to basics, you know what we say? All our we is one family. Yes. Family. Because we wouldn't so want to see anybody suffer if we really keep that mindset as Tobigonians. Calypsonians. That's right. Out with singing in July, she bring it back now. All our we are one family. <laughs> so ladies, we have reached the end of our show. And we are going to be giving our closing statement. First, Avi will tell us about what she is doing to help her village of Dallaford. Mary, I don't know if you start yours as yet or where do you help? And Joanne, well, most of us, we're doing it personal because our, we come from such a large family mm -hmm. <laughs> that we can't even go out of our family line. I didn't start with no family. Up to now, I haven't helped a family. I help them with encouragement and to let them use what they have to get what they want. A lot of us we have, but we don't know how to use it. So we have to teach them how to do that. Mm -hmm. I just help family all the time. Eh? When I say family help, I mean huge help. But yeah. right now, since I start to deal with these laptops and so on, I am speaking about that. Yes. But families, we are always helping. Yes. Because they are my family. And if they don't have and I have, why do I claim them? Just to show off that, that you're poor or you're hungry or you're weak and I better than you. Mm. That's what some people do, you know. Jesus. We keep people who doesn't have a wrong so that we can lift ourselves and behave as if we're better than everybody else. My God. Well, that's not only Mama Coco and everybody here know me by now. I mean, blood relatives, eh? My blood relatives, they need help also, but I teach them as how I learn it. 
God help those who mm. help themselves. Themselves. Mm -hmm. You may be weak or low, but then if you change, you remember everything in life, there is a change must come over us. This pandemic came with a force, and the force is you have to redirect, you have to change. There's a dynamic shifting of the shifting, shifting of the shifting of the shifting of the cards, mm -hmm. placing things where it should be, and putting things that should be in other places, find the right place for everything. That's right. So now we are gonna Avi, Avi, you will start. You have three minutes tops. <laughs> um so I want to say and, and something that really stuck out for me. Uh, back in 2009, Dallaford RC had the highest distinction of having the highest and most passes on the island of Tobago for common entrance or what you guys call SEA. The highest and most passes for common entrance in 2009. I didn't know that. Yes. And um. for me... Gr growing up and going to Dallas Ford RC, my entire elementary school life, I believe that education is of the utmost serious nurture. We need the nurturing of our children, that continued growth of our children. And before this pandemic happened, I and my mother we wanted to go back and do yearly school supply donation. Had everything planned to go the summer before Corona, the summer of last year. School supplies, book bags. Um, and I also wanted to start a reading initiative with the first year, second year, and standard yes. one classes. And also for the children going into high school. That was something that was personal to me. I wanted to start a reading initiative because I remember I didn't have books. My mother couldn't afford it. Yep. And I used to read my aunts and uncles high school arithmetic book and all these books that you never find a little two-year-old reading. Bible. That It was all I had accessible to me. And those things were what I knew growing up. You couldn't tell me otherwise. Right? And so it was it, it, it was imperative for me to do something like that for my community. And COVID came, and I said to myself, I couldn't give up. I had to sit back and restructure and rethink, what can I do to still help these young children? I reached out to my cousin, which is the now principal of Delaford Roman Catholic School, RC School. And in discussion, it came up that at least 50% of the students did not have access to computer services. Oh, Families with multiple choice with, with multiple children had to share their parents' cell phone or tablet. And then sometimes some of them didn't even have the requirements needed for the classes. So they weren't able to see, they weren't able to even really go through the meetings like they should. And it, I come back and I sit and I think, I know to myself, and it hurt my heart, because I can't help that 50%. But I wanted to do something that would give them access. So I, I went back and I talked to mommy, and I said, what can I do? I took, cool. I, took cool. I took the last bit that I had and went and purchased a total of 10 PCs for Delaford RC. Yes. Um, five computers. Explain what is a boy in my PC. Yes, five computers and five tablets. And initially, I wanted to have it where the, they would set it up as a computer station where children could come and go as they pleased. As a give them like a time slot. As an internet cafe, like. Yes, That's like it. an internet cafe, a cafe within the school where you would give individual children a time slot to come and have access to use. And with the intentions of restocking, in addition to the 10, I also gave 
two families, one three computers and one one computer and a tablet. So that was for me 15 in all computers that I sent. And with, again, with the intentions of having this on a continual basis wherever I had to continue sending. Um, I reached out to a teacher of mine who focuses on advocacies because advoc I want to start my own advocacy program. And I wanted to also think up like, what else could I do? I know I can't help the five and I might not have it all the time to send new computers. So I decided, and it's something that I'm working on. I'm sending out for friends that I have and people that I know, if they have used computers, that they send it to me and I take it to someone that I know that fixes computers so that I can get all of those donations in and send them to the schools. And I don't want to just benefit Delaford RC. I want to benefit all the students in the Spaceside area, in the Roxborough area, in the Argyle area, people in general, even if it's Cudlock Hall or Scarborough, I want to benefit the children in Tobago. That is my advocacy hope. Well, Avi, <laughs> Cindy almost killed oh, me. Avi. Hey, Cindy. You go, Avi. girl. Avi really finds your voice. <laughs> 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 Ladies, we are going to end it here right now. Next time, we will hear from, from Mary Dates and we will hear from Jojo about what they are about and what they're doing. And um, But you guys, can we have your closing statement? Starting first with Ladies, three minutes each. I eh? don't want to time all here and cut <laughs> off anybody. So let's do it three minutes each. Oh, I was told let let um let Joanne say what she's up to and her plans. Joanne, three minutes, you hear me? I know you find your voice too, you know. Because when I invited you <laughs> first to say that I ain't too sure, I, you know, I doesn't talk, you know what I mean? I, I'm so proud that everybody, including my cousin Mary. I'm so <laughs> proud of this family team and this connection. You understand me? You mm -hmm. know? Um, okay, you ready? I've, hold on, hold on. I think I now find my voice too. Avi, see me killing me here. When we done the show, I'll just stay where you are, Avi, so you could get the next two jokes from Cindy. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Avi, you got sister, really love you, eh? But them <laughs> jokes, they, them jokes, they kind of so behind the scene. We, we, we're going to laugh. <laughs> so, Cousin Jojo, tell us. Okay. Um, You know, I I do help. I'm in the process of helping um somebody. Um, I, I will tell you more about it when we come behind the scene, Cora. Yeah. Um, I always help all the time. You know, I send whatever I can. Somebody needs support with an examination or whatever, but I do. But what I have to say is that Tobago is always in my heart. And I, I always remember my Auntie Beatrice. She was the one who, she encouraged so much reading with me. And I always remember she used to take me to Scarborough. And there used to be a little bookshop in, in yeah. Beatrice, name. Aunt, uh, Beatrice Jack, well, she's dead now. She died in May last year. But she always took me when she would go to do her banking and do her hair. Beatrice and that was my, you know, treat. And she used to take me to a little bookshop that used to be in the car park area in, um, you know, where Maraj used to be yeah. initially. But I always remember that I always had this vision of having something like that. I was thinking about it this past week. But I want to be able to do something that involves reading books, internet facilities, so people can go in if they have to purchase, if they have to sit down and relax and read or uh, use computers. But that's kind of part of my vision. That's not happened yet. But that would be my the thing for the future because I think I have had the opportunity to go up in De La Ford, go to De La Ford RC into Roxborough, composite, and, you know, it is my wish to that somebody else should reach where I reach and further than me. And that would be what I want to do anyway. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having me here. So you 
was so sweet. <laughs> so we have now Sister Mary Dates, yeah. Mary Dates, my people. She migrated mm -hmm. to to the United Kingdom and um she spent how many years as a nurse? In, as a nurse? Me, 28. Too long, Mama Coco. Speak up, speak up, <laughs> let them know what you put I in said too much. 28 years I've been here nursing. And you special mm -hmm. because when you yeah. come back. You have your question to answer concerning um diabetes so tell us a little oh, <laughs> okay now um my plans is always work in center progress center your face yes okay my plans is always work in progress i i i was brought up by a single mother and my intention is to always try and help at least one single mother a year in um, a primary school who is struggling to with uniforms and books for a child. It would not be the same child every year, but because of COVID, it had to, I had to um, slow it down at the minute. But that, that's my intention of, and my way of giving back. So you started um, on, or you? No, I've identified people that yeah. I'm going to um, work with. So you have okay. your... Who's gonna do it for you? Your sister is gonna. No, I am. I am engaging my niece. Your niece. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, because she works. She works in one of the primary schools, so she's going to work along with her head teacher to identify at least one child a year, one child a year. to get that help. Yes, and then we'll go from there. And in closing, I I know this is we haven't discussed this topic today, but yesterday. I saw the outpouring of support for women in Tobago okay, we, and another, Trinidad and Tobago that's with that March. Pardon? Start it right now. Next week, Wednesday. No, let me Next see. week. Okay. Next but week, I'm just Wednesday. saying that that was beautiful to see yesterday, all those Mary, men coming out. Mary, I don't think you're on that panel. But Wednesday, no, it's this week. <laughs> Today's Sunday. <laughs> we are having a powerful panel on Wednesday. That's the panel that we are going to speak about the abuse and whatever we talk. Oh, Mary wasn't here when we talked about that. Where, where, where Avi will be on that panel, I think you will, Pastor Wendy will be on that panel. Jamelia Jacob will be on that panel. Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yes, next week, Wednesday. Next Wednesday, okay. It's Wednesday or Sunday? It's Wednesday, yeah? Wednesday. And uh, we have more people, but I just can't remember them all. So moving on, we are at the end of this show. And if any one of you have anything to say that you want to say today, but we are going to be back next Sunday with this panel. Yes. Amen. Pastor Wendy, can you give your closing statement? Yes, ma'am. I, I want to, again, uh, say thanks for this moment that I can share this forum with these beautiful ladies. Uh, but I, I want to appeal to us as individuals to get mm -hmm. back to the basics of love. I want to appeal to the village council and the churches in each of the villages in Tobago. If you have to do a community needs assessment, identify the families that are in need most and minister to their needs. Find ways of reaching out to them and ministering to them. We can do this. It only takes a spark to get the fire going. Mm -hmm. And if you want to reach one, trust me, we can get to it. We can move mountains if we just think about loving on each other and caring for our neighbor as we care for ourselves. A lot of That's the right. issues that we're having a lot of the needs that are there, a lot of the hungry and the naked, a lot of the people that are in prison are feeling a sorts of way because we have not shown love. So let's get back to the basics of love and implementing love because God is love. Thank you again, Mama Coco, for this opportunity. And I bless you, you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Love you, lady. Well, I just remembered the, the other two names. We have Nikosi Phillips. Nikosi Phillips will be here and he will be on the panel with abuse and women. 
and especially the young girl that was killed there in, in Trinidad. And we have him, we have, um, we have, we have, um, we have her, and then we also have now, I get thrown off again. The name just came and it just gone again. Ah, and we have brother, Willan Ivan Nurse. Yes. <laughs> so what a panel. Five people. And the matches. Five people. So we have in. We have in four females here. And brother Will and Ivan Nurse. Can everybody believe what is going on? <laughs> <laughs> now the last Wednesday. The, look at look at this. The last Wednesday of February. I'm not dragging it on. I'm taking it slowly because I have to get this out. The last Wednesday in February. Mm -hmm. We're going to be blessed with one of Tobago's most talented cultural minstrel. Oh, wow. I know a lot of people don't know who I'm talking about. He is a forgotten cultural officer. His name is Brother Michael Baker. Yes. Wow. Yes. 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 To the culture of Tobago. The culture of Tobago. That's right. The vibrancy of their contribution as one mm -hmm. of our first ever, I believe. That is who I know. Yes. Yes. MC. You mm -hmm. hear me? Scouting for talent, isn't it? Talent. Yes. yes. I was a participant. He was there with us, yes. We know him as one of our first lifeguards. Hey, you turn. Yes, that's right. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yes. Me. Training and performing. Yeah. But we seem mm -hmm. to forget the people in Tobago that we need to lift up and make sure that they have a quality life. Because at the time when he was performing, there was no money. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. There was no money in our form. There was yeah. no money in culture. True. Yes, that's so true. Let us give God praise and thanks that he has answered me and he is going to be on our last Wednesday in February. So ladies and gentlemen, I kept, the, I, I kept this for last because I want everybody to start to think, do I know Michael Baker? Yes, you do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In our yeah. age group, we all should know who is Michael Baker. Oh, yes. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. I used to sing with him in the tents. Yeah. I, yes, I performed yeah. that he's scouting for talent and came in second one year. So yeah. he's, he's a great man. Yeah. Yes. So yes. let's welcome him. And my daughter said that she's dying and let us get the show going. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you guys. We can't even read any any of the questions that you sent from people. And I believe it was a beautiful, beautiful time. Awesome sauce. We want to thank yeah. our audience for their patience, for their input. And I want all of us who are on this show today to find some time and go back into the show. Yeah. Listen to yourself. Listen to what you contribute. Listen to how people accept you guys. And please, like, comment, and share.